welcome back. I'm Tedward and I've been wanting to say this for a very long time. Today, we're driving the Lexus LFA. You'll notice right off the bat, these wheels look a little different. So the car was sourced by AI Design down in uh, Tuckahoe, New York for Team Champagne Ninjas. They immediately went out and sourced these HRE 935 two-piece wheels. They were built specially for this car. Very cool, they're 20 inches. I do love the standard LFA wheel. I think the standard LFA wheel is incredible, but obviously Team Champagne Ninjas never does anything ordinary. They always have to add some things. So even under the car, there's underglow, so you can have a little disco party in a very JDM vibe in this LFA. But, oh, the proportions, the sound, the look, ooh hoo hoo We have this gorgeous V10 that supposedly revs from idle to redline in 0.6 seconds. Fuel cut is at 9,500 RPM. It's a high revving beast. This engine was created in collaboration with Yamaha. And to make sure that we get all of the cool sounds, there are, like the internet, a series of tubes behind the engine. And you can see how far back this is sat. It is technically front mid. Everything's very light because lightweight materials were the name of the game with the LFA. But something I had never seen was the rear hatch open. So let's take a look. This is the wing right here. This will rise up while we're driving, but you can actually fit some things back here. It's not so bad. I'd imagine, well, it doesn't get too, too hot, but I'd imagine that gets a little warm, so make sure you don't have your ice cream in there, I suppose. But yeah, there are uh, some storage options, and of course, everything's carbon fiber. This is a carbon fiber reinforced polymer monocoque. It's like the center of it is a monocoque chassis, and then it has two aluminum subframes, one on the front, one on the rear, and that's how it's all constructed. In the back, we've got this iconic triple exhaust, and it sounds insane. I can't, all right, you know what? Let's just go drive it. You don't care. You know what the car is. You already know what it is. Let's just go for a drive. One thing I did notice when I got in though, was that the microphone, I believe that's a microphone, it has the exhaust set up right there. Huh, would you look at that? These seat controls are just out of this world, so that pushes forward and backward. You've got all this and heated seats, all the goodies. And the seat belts, I believe, are airbags. So this is the seat belt. The seat belt has all this crazy padding on it. It's a little strange. We're gonna start it with the door open, so we'll get our carbon fiber key on our incredible pedals. We'll get on that brake pedal. We get in here, turn to on. Make sure that we're in neutral, and then we have our engine start button right here. Car's already warmed up. Throw it into sport mode. Yes, that is how good it sounds. Everything's pretty ergonomic in here, although I don't want to touch anything. I just want to focus on driving. Even the door handle, the release lever, is just the most insane piece of metal. I don't know what it is, magnesium, titanium. I assume everything is just the most ridiculous thing. All these screws say Lexus on them. Replacing any parts in this car will be miserable, so just take care of it. I wanna go windows down for a little bit, so we're gonna put the earmuffs over the microphones. And to get our parking brake released, down here. They get into first gear. We pull that paddle back and we're ready to go. Single clutch, six speed. Now you'll notice there's quite a bit of lag in that shift. We can adjust our shift porosity with this little guy right here. And then you'll see the yellow pop up. Now we're on full tilt, nice and clear. We'll get over this bump here. Savage shifts. This is insane. Oh my goodness. What a rush. <laughs> oh, 
I just love the way it goes through an entire gear. That's something really special. You can hear some beeping. Don't be alarmed. The beeping is the dash cam. I believe it's just saying, hey, you pulled a few G's. What's going on, dude? the pinnacle of natural aspiration. I can't believe it. And the way it's designed, so this car is really interesting because when it came out, it had been in development for so long that I don't know that it was actually like top of the heap ever. I mean, the Nürburgring edition definitely uh, made some waves, but when this car finally came out, there was some pretty impressive stuff out there because it had been in production essentially for like a decade. So here we are now in the finished product and Maybe at the time it didn't sell that crazy well because there were other options that maybe didn't have such a, a slow single clutch gearbox or anything. But the chassis, that's what they spent all the time engineering on this car. And the materials were everything to them. Do a little brake check down here. What's amazing is just how intuitive everything feels in this car. Really, it's easy to jump into and just drive, aside from kind of that clunky gearbox. Ready, let's dig into the brakes a little bit. Oh my goodness. Yeah, those are some bitey stoppers. The paddle shifters are column mounted so they don't go with the wheel. Love it or hate it, that's a very supercar thing to have. But the acceleration and the theater behind it, oh. behind me because oh, it, it's shouty it's certainly shouty you're not hiding in the LFA how does it sound next to a concrete barrier something else and here we are driving it in like normal traffic visibility is not bad because we've got a front engine right front mid I should say but we don't have uh, the complete obstruction of that uh, C pillar or B pillar whatever you want to call it it's not great I mean you don't have like incredible 911 style visibility but the mirrors are nice and big and if you angle them the right way you're all set so uh, you know you don't feel scared to jump in and drive this car there's some supercars that are just absolutely terrifying to get in and drive because it just doesn't seem like it's designed for much more than artwork but because this is designed by you know Toyota Alexis this this seems to be a lot more geared toward actually using the car And we'll get into the ride quality. So, I mean, do you care? Does that even matter? It's stiff, big surprise, big surprise. Your Lexus LFA is a stiff vehicle, but it's usable on the road, even with just the best throttle response ever. Oh my God, you can see the big wing giant up over the rear of the car. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be a little tongue twisted in this one because it's a pretty exciting vehicle to get the opportunity to drive. Casual drive through traffic. All right, let's, let's get on some little back roads, see how she fits in. I was definitely not aware of how this transmission really behaved. And I think that's, to me, when I drive these cars, this is what I like to see. Nobody ever shows you what it's like to drive like, you know, four tenths in an LFA. How is it like to drive it around town? Everyone just shows you those incredible glamour shots on a racetrack or something. And 
you know, sometimes usability is worth something, right? Make sure there's no turtles. Usually there's amphibians crossing here. It's fun to short shift it because you've got this grunt down low that is just, oh my God, unmatched. Definitely appreciate this glass up here. Gives me additional visibility of anything like around a corner. I'm gonna be careful up here because this is somewhat residential, but. And we also don't wanna destroy a half a million dollar car in front of a sign like that. You know, that's not the vibe. So anyway, <sighs> deep breath. I get why people spend big money on this car. I get why this is an appreciating asset in a lot of people's collections. I do just hope that everybody drives them because this deserves to be driven. I'm just so entranced by how sharp the steering is. I mean, it just turns in so abruptly, but even though there's no hesitation in it, it's not scary. It doesn't like throw you across a lane. You're, you're expecting everything that happens in it. That's hard to do. Get out there and party. your Honda Accord. Goes to show though, there can be debris on the road. There could just be a milk crate hanging out to ruin your day, to ruin your bumper, to ruin a very difficult bumper to replace. My camera bag sloshing around in there, don't care. That's replaceable. Hard to replace parts on an LFA. So it does have some supercar tendencies. You'll notice the DPMS light on here. Uh, I just went and checked. I think we've just got to reset it. It seems happy. I checked each tire individually. We're good to go. But you know, what would a supercar be without a warning light? I wanted to show you one last thing before we finish. Check out the whole gauge display moves. This is just the coolest thing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my drive in this LFA. Huge special thanks to AI Design and Team Champagne Ninjas for this opportunity. I mean, not many people are clamoring to throw me keys to an LFA, so I genuinely appreciate this opportunity. This is amazing. Thank you, life-changing stuff. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. That's satisfying. Pretty safe to say this is the most insane sounding V10 I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.